Are you feeling stressed out at work because you feel yourself drowning in meetings because you're double or maybe triple booked? When's the last time you had a decent lunch hour where you didn't have a meeting that you had to attend? Or when you do attend a meeting, you're taking terrible notes because you're multitasking. But you know what? There's a solution for all of this. It's record your meetings. In this video, I'll show you just how easy it is to use WebEx to record, playback, and securely share your meeting recordings. So let's get to it. Recording is relatively simple. As a host, all you need to do is look for the record button in the bottom menu. If you click on record, there'll be a number of different options which I'll walk you through right now. The first one is where to save that recording. Now, it may be administratively set where you can save it. In my case, all my recordings will be saved to the cloud, which I'll have access to them later on from my personal webpage, and I'll show you how to get to that. Or it can be saved to your hard drive. Your organization may have different policies, so your situation may vary. In my case, they're saved to the cloud. Now, if I wanna change the layout of my recording, I have the options for different layouts depending on whether I'm sharing content or whether I'm not sharing content. Now this is relatively new. So you wanna pay attention to how these record layouts are set so that your recording shows up the way you'd like it to. Now the first one I can do here is I can do what's called a stack. So the content that's being shared will show up very large and a number of video participants will be listed at the top, they'll be displayed at the top. Or I can have my focus content take up the whole screen and only the active speaker be shown in the corner. That's focus content. And then the last one, I don't want any of the speakers to be shown, I want the focus to be on the content. So that's focus content. Now, if I'm not sharing any content and I wanna record all the video of the participants, I have different layouts as well. I have grid, which uh, is what's being shown here. I have stack, which focuses on the active speaker. And then I have focus, which really focuses on the active speaker because no one else's video is actually shown. Or if I don't want anyone's video and only want the audio to be recorded, I would just pick the blank format. Now, there's a little check mark down here on the bottom which says follow stage layout when synced. And what that means is that if this option is checked, the recording layout will match the sync stage. So syncing the stage is a capability that the host does where I can decide whose video actually shows up to the remote participants along with the content. I can pick and choose. So if I click that button, it's going to follow the stage view. So if I wanna produce my meeting recording and control actually who shows up in it, I would have this check. So I would normally have this check by default, just in case I wanna be able to do that. So then I will hit save. And so my recording is actually gonna reflect what I've chosen here in terms of layout. So if I wanna start the recorder, I just hit the big record button, which is red. And this meeting is being recorded. You'll hear that announcement. This meeting is being recorded. So what's significant about that, regardless of when I join the meeting, say the meeting is being recorded and I join late, the person who's joining will hear that announcement. Now, everybody else won't hear it, but the person joining will hear it so that no one can have an excuse to say, well, I really didn't know that the meeting was being recorded. Now, if I hit pause, what that means is that the meeting is paused. I can say what I want. And then if I hit resume, this meeting is being recorded. That reminder that the meeting is being recorded again comes up. And then anything that I said between pausing and then starting again will not be part of the recording and it will all continue to be on that same meeting file. Now, if I hit stop, it's a different behavior. So if I stop the recording and then restart it at a later stage, a separate recording file will be created. So I can actually create multiple recording files of the meeting. So say I have an all day meeting and I have uh, a number of different agenda items on that meeting. Say I have a number of different topics and I want to create a separate recording file for each individual topic. So the way I would do that, I'd hit stop once that particular topic is ended, then I'd hit start again. And so that would create another meeting file as part of that same meeting. So that's the use case in which you'd use stop versus pause. 
So that's really it. Those are the controls that you have access to when recording a meeting. They're relatively simple. And so take advantage of those capabilities so that you can save time and record those meetings when you need to. Finding your recordings is easy. As a host, after the meeting is over, you will be sent an email that will provide you with the link and the password of how you can access your recording. Another way to access your recordings is by going to your WebEx site and logging in. Now, if you've never done this, just look at what your URL that you use for WebEx, and then you should be able to sign in that, into that site with your credentials. Once you do that, go to the left-hand side menu and you'll see a section called recordings and you'll see all of your recordings listed. Once you finish a recording, if you go to the site right away, it usually takes a couple of minutes for your recording to render and then it will show up. Um, so this is how you get to your recording. Now, if you want to play back your recording, it's very simple. Just click on the name of your recording and you'll see a window come up where you now have a lot of options in terms of how you query or play back this recording. So the first thing that you do is if you click on it, uh, click on play, it will start to play. Hey everyone, welcome recording. to the meeting today. On today's agenda, we're going to... So you can see that it, it plays pretty quickly. Now I want to walk you through each one of these controls down here at the bottom. Now if you want to skip ahead or skip back by 10 seconds each way, I can fast forward by 10 seconds. If I want to see who all the speakers were in this meeting, now I had seven people join this meeting, they were in and out, but only two people actually spoke. And so if I click on follow speaker, you can see that Juan Santiago, who was a guest, spoke and myself, John Seaton, spoke in this meeting. And if I wanted to hop to the point in which Juan Santiago spoke, what I would click on is his name under follow the speaker and you see that there's a little bubble that pops up a little circle that pops up uh, on the timeline and so if i click on that that will actually fast forward to when he begins to speak and so if i hit play hey everyone sorry i joined a little bit late this just demonstrates to you that if you have multiple people in a meeting and want to be able to go to the points of of that meeting when they're actually speaking it's very easy to do now, following along, simple value controls here. Uh, if I want to turn on or off closed captioning, you can see closed captioning is actually turned on. I can turn that off. Uh, if I need to trim my recording, I can do that. So I can you know, take some off the beginning. Maybe we didn't start right away. And, and maybe there was some things discussed at the end that I don't want other folks to hear about. I can very easily trim the beginning or end of my recording. Uh, the other things that I can do is I can either slow down the speed or increase the speed. Maybe if people are talking really fast or English is my second language, I don't really want to be able to listen to the recording at a slower speed. I can do that or I can speed it up if I don't have a lot of time and I'm good at listening to things that go fast. I can do that, too. So I can, you know, increase the speed of this 25 percent. Today's agenda, we're going to talk about one of our largest opportunities. We and so you can hear that it was actually sped up. Uh, the final control here is just if I want to make this full screen, I can make it full screen. And if I want to return to what I had before, I can hit escape and return back to it not being full screen. Now, let's look at the transcript here on the right hand side. So this is one of the powerful things about this tool is the fact that I have a transcript so I can scroll through all of the dialogue that occurred during the meeting. You know, if something maybe were not captured right, I can edit the transcript very easily and then hit save uh, as well. So that's that's a useful tool. If I want to search for a certain term, say the term subscription, when was that said? And I can see that was said 18 seconds into the meeting. Now, as a host, if I wanted to create chapters and I've already done this, it's very easy to create chapters. If I wanted to edit this a little bit more, you see how easy it is to create. I just put what the timestamp is and the topic and that actually creates the chapter. So someone coming into this meeting and they want to hop to a particular section, they can do that very easily. If I want to see who actually participated in this meeting and when they joined and when they left, it's also very easy to see that here as well. So these are all of the controls uh, that allows you to access information as quickly as possible within 
the meetings. Now, if I want to share my meeting, it's very easy to do. Up here, you see there's a little icon that means share. So if I click on share, all I need to do is enter the email addresses of the folks that I want to share this recording with. I can customize a message and then I can make this link either public, meaning that anyone with this link and this password can access this recording. Or if it's I've got some intellectual property that I don't want to leave the company, I can have it so that only people who are part of my company can join this meeting. Uh, so I can make that public again. Now, if I wanted to just simply to copy this link, maybe I want to put it into my messaging app. I can do that as well by clicking on this copy icon. It will copy the link and the password so that I can forward that onto someone else so that they can access the meeting. I also have the ability to download both the MP4 file, the video file, as well as the transcript. And so this would give me the opportunity to say I wanted to do some post editing of this meeting, I can do that. Or if I needed the transcript for whatever reason, I can do that as well. So if you look here down at the bottom, I already had downloaded them. So this is what the MP4 file looks like. So if I hit play on that. Hey everyone, welcome to the meeting today on today's agenda. So it's just simply an MP4 file. And if you wanted to look at the VTT file, it's, it looks like it's, it's in this format. So, um, you know, VTT is the format that you will see uh, the transcript in. So hit that record button and change the culture of your company to record more. Because let's face it, who wants to attend every meeting just to keep up? So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and have a great day.